everyone. I just wanted to do a quick check-in. I'm sorry, I was out uh, and about all weekend and um, I didn't get a chance to post in the course room as much as I would have liked. So I thought I would surprise you with a little video. Um, really just wanted to kind of reiterate some of the course uh, discussion conversation around conceptualization. And I know in this class, we have a um, a pretty heavy assignment, the second assignment that you're doing that is a little heavier on course con or case conceptualization. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up um, the biopsychosocial template one more time. And I want to just point out a couple of things, um, just some reminders. So first of all, I want to start um, right here in the case conceptualization section. Um, so a quick reminder in, under normal circumstances, this would really just be a couple of paragraphs and mostly it would be to support your diagnosis. So it would be a whole paragraph on justifying the diagnosis. Like how does this particular client and their unique presenting problem, how do they meet the criteria for the diagnostic, uh, the diagnosis that you put in here? Um, then the second, um, paragraph would be uh, the, the conceptualization part, which is identifying what your theory is, sort of why you chose that theory and how you plan on moving forward with your client using this particular set of intervention strategies. So that would be like your second paragraph. So in the second assignment, we ask that you go a little more in detail on the conceptualization part of it. So I really want you to focus heavily on your theory. So maybe like one entire paragraph that's just explaining your theory, maybe a second paragraph on why that theory is relevant to the client in question, right? The client that you're presenting. And then I want you to go into what are some of the basic assumptions of the theory. So every theory has some basic philosophical, like foundational assumptions that you must believe in, in order to, you know, operate from that theory. And I want you to talk about why that set of assumptions works well for your client. And then in the next paragraph, I want you to talk about what are some of the basic intervention strategies that are aligned with that theory. And for those of you who are doing person-centered or humanistic, you might have a tough time with that section. So you're gonna have to borrow probably some intervention strategies. Like you'll talk about the basic, you know, Rogerian approach to, you know, like um, reflective listening and or active listening and, um, you know, building rapport and joining with the client and things like that. But we need more specific intervention strategies, especially for your, um, <laughs> there's thunder and lightning outside and my dog just crawled under my desk. I think he's a little scared. <laughs> anyway, um, so go into detail on your intervention strategies, okay, and why you think those specific intervention strategies are going to help this client with these particular presenting problems. So let's remember there are two things to consider. One is evidence-based practice, like why a particular intervention strategy is chosen for a particular diagnosis or set of symptoms, but also the cultural um, uh, context, you know, of why this particular theory works well for someone from this culture. So those are two things that need to be addressed in, in that particular um, part of your document. Oh my gosh, he's trembling under my feet, poor thing. <laughs> Jack, what are you doing? You want to say hi to my class? Look at him. He's down here. Look at this. He's towering under my hands. <laughs> poor thing. Okay. Um, so let's see. I forgot what number paragraph we're on, but some kind of uh closing, like um, how you plan on moving forward with this client. So a number of strategies and interventions that you're going to try with this client and why you think, you know, what's your justification and rationale for why you think those particular intervention strategies are appropriate for this client and for their diagnosis, their symptoms, and their um, culture. So I'm just going to kind of scroll back up here to the beginning of the biopsychosocial, and I want you to look back here at the presenting problem. And it says, what are the symptoms that the client is reporting? Why are they seeking counseling? This section should be brief and document the client's specific symptoms, not just the list that you take out of the DSM, but how do they meet the criteria that's listed in the DSM? And specifically, what is their functional impairment? And let's not forget that their functional impairment actually needs to be um, identified or they don't have a mental health 
diagnosis. Like you, they literally have to have a functional impairment in order for us to give them a diagnosis. If they don't have a functional impairment, they don't have a clinical diagnosis. Okay. Um, and remember, remembering in the history of the problem that there's, there are, um, certain criteria that have to be met also in order for there to be an actual, um, diagnosis. So, um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because your presenting problem is where you list your, your um, symptoms and those symptoms need to be um, aligned with your diagnosis and they need to also be um, established in your case conceptualization for how they meet criteria for that diagnosis and why this particular intervention strategy in theory is going to be appropriate for that. So you're going to need, you're going to need some, um, you're going to need some research that shows that the intervention strategies that you've chosen actually um, are evidence-based in the sense of like, this has actually been shown to help treat X, Y, Z. Right. And then the other one is the culture. Like, how do you know that this particular theoretical perspective is actually appropriate for this cultural um, population? So keep those things in mind. Happy writing. Great job in the discussion this week. I saw some really nice um, critical thinking and sharing of your case conceptualization strategies. I really appreciate that. Appreciate you all. And I'm excited to see you on Thursday. Take care. Bye.